here. Um, I'm still Bryce Spear, and um, I'm really glad you guys all took time to come and join and go through all these agenda items and work on stuff for the shack so we can help the students of Conroe um, Independent School District. And I also just want to send a shout out to all of our um, junior high athletes. Today is the track and field district meet. And so I know those students have worked really, really hard. And so um, I just wish them all the best of luck. Um, Mr. Haymark. Yes, uh, first item on the agenda is review and approval of minutes. So the minutes from the November 8th, 2022 uh, special meeting of the SHAC were distributed to all SHAC members prior to today's meeting. It was requested that member review sorry, uh, the minutes. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Okay. Okay. So that's why we have a little bit update to our system today. We, so we, we printed out the, the membership uh, agendas, I mean, the uh, sign-in sheets. And so you were able to hopefully see your name today, sign next to it. And we also have name plates that my secretary did to the, for us today. We're really appreciative of her getting those done today. Uh, so we will add you, Laura and Reed, to the attendance from last meeting. Thank you. Any other corrections to the minutes? Okay, if there are no, no further corrections, I'll call for a motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a motion? Please state your name for the record, please, guys, also. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Okay. Coach Orlando, thank you. Do we have a second? Curtin. Sam, Sam, you got those. Okay. All in favor? I'm oh, sorry, any discussion? About the minutes? Any discussion? Okay, all in favor, please vote by raised hand. All opposed? Raise your hand. Okay, the motion passes. The minutes of the November 8th, 2022 special meeting of the Shack are approved as distributed and reviewed. Dr. Spear. Um, our next agenda item is our process for community feedback. Uh, we want to try to increase transparency with community members coming to the Shack with concerns and then our responses to those concerns so that it's more of an open um, platform and direct line of communication to the group. Um, so, um, under community feedback, the first um, the first item is the approval and addition approval of addition of, of benefits of abstinence to re reductive health reproductive health PowerPoint. I'm so sorry. Um, this is the slide that was brought or the concern that was brought forward at a previous SHAC meeting about the health um, the health and um, human sexuality PowerPoint not having enough abstinence um, or focus on abstinence consistent with TEC 28004. Um, TEC 28004 has a specific statement in it that the um, direction and instruction for um, human sexuality must have an emphasis on abstinence. And so that was brought forth as a community concern within the shack. Um, this slide is from the Goodhart Wilcox text um, that we use to teach our students. And so um, this was looked at by um, the compliance committee and then is being brought forth for formal vote to add to the PowerPoint presentation for the human sexuality instruction for our students. Um, uh, Dr. Upshaw, do you want to elaborate at all with that one? We just wanted to add that we did, through the Compliance Committee, we also met with um, the school principal, mm -hmm. which was Knox Mr. Junior High. Yep. April, do you want to add? And also yeah. some teachers? Yeah, so Mr. Joel, Mike, Mike, Mike. I turned it on. Can you on music? It is green. Okay. Um, so you'll remember from the last meeting. Um, I'm going to be screaming. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, that Mr. Dahl had volunteered himself and his health teachers to look at the slide. And he's not here tonight, um, so I don't want to speak for him, but he definitely came back and said to all of us that he was definitely comfortable with this. His health teachers were comfortable. They were fine with the material. And he did even add um, that he wished when he was a teacher that he would have had this because he thought it would be helpful. Um, to have in the curriculum. So, and as Bryce had said, um, this is directly like verbatim, a screenshot out of the Good Heart Wilcox companion text. That is where our human sexuality material comes from. So nothing added or taken away directly. Any, any questions about that or feedback? Um, so you want to, make a, want to make a motion to add this slide to the PowerPoint presentation? I make a motion. Second? I second. Okay. April Kersey. All in favor? 
Any opposition? Perfect. Motion passes. I would to say that the next step will be to get this added probably by the next by next week. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll get with the the, uh, the teacher leaders and we'll update the uh, PowerPoint and this will be updated on the Conroe ISD website as well within the week. Perfect. Thank you so much. And just well. a process question: How does that get communicated out to the teachers? I will Do they? With them. Okay, so it's yeah. a, okay. They Do will, they use what's on the website, or is there a separate place that they access? No, they they have the actual PowerPoints. What's on the website is a PDF, so okay. can, but they actually have the PowerPoint slides, and that will be distributed to all the teachers. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, our next agenda item is discussion for the new process of community input. So, you know, at our last meeting, we talked about the Texas um, Department of State Health and Human Services um, guide for the shack. And so, um, you know, when we look at the instructions the state gives us on how to run the shack, one of the recommendations from the state is that we have an email that is um, directly linked to the district where community members can access the shack directly. And so. Um, because of feedback that because of feedback that the shack is more difficult to access, um, we are going to implement or would like to implement a, a direct email shack, CISD shack at conroeisd.net, I believe is the domain name um, for community members to act, you know, to email the shack and and communicate concerns that they may have or questions or anything that the shack could be involved with. I mean, ideas that they want to see on their campuses, things that we could improve, the things we could develop, anything we could help to improve student health. Um, and so this email, the, the idea that we're proposing is that um, a community, community member can access, email the shack, whatever their concern is. That email is monitored by the district administrator. Um, and then when the concern is presented, we will communicate back with the member of the community and try to understand what, what they're thinking, offer them an opportunity to come speak at the shack to explain what their thoughts are themselves as well. Um, and then just work in collaboration to see how can we help? How can we make this better if it needs improvement? How can we address the concern? And so um, that is the, the new process that we are proposing that we work through as a shack. Does anyone have questions about that? So how will that get communicated? I presume it would be, who's gonna be checking the account per texas dshs uh -huh. the recommendation is that the account is monitored by a district administrator and so the expectation would be at this point the district coordinator which is mr hamer um, would communicate with me or with the shack any information that comes through that um, but bearing in mind that at this <coughs> point um, i think the community sees the shack as a part of the district and while we work collaboratively with the district they may be transmitting information that's sensitive and really isn't appropriate if it's um, personal information about a student or a campus. So um, the district administrators get first pass, if you will, to make sure that that information is appropriate to be disseminated mm -hmm. to us without having any redaction. And then we would move forward like that. So what are you all thinking in terms of process? You get an email in, what happens next? I do. I'd like to, can we show it where we're, oh, where, sure. do you yeah. want to show it? Sarah, are you able to? Um, help us show the website yes so we wanted it to be transparent so it's not hidden so we thought one of the good places to have it is that uh, we worked with our communications department on our general website there is a link that where it says contact us so in a minute uh, Ms. Blakelock is going to show us so on the top right there where it says contact us then we scroll down and there are options that you can um, Choose general inquiry, lunch money refunds, the student health advisory committee, technology, transportation, and website. So normally, right, so you would click on the mm -hmm. shack. It lets the community know what the purpose of the shack is. And this is actually, we uh, reviewed this with uh, Dr. Spear on what our idea was. And that's straight from the manual, what the purpose of the shack is. And then they would submit that information and it comes to an email account. And then we are able to Prior to our meetings and prior to setting agendas, we meet with Dr. Spear to talk to her about this is what's happening, you know, and our, our vision would be, well, is this something that goes to the SHAC compliance group? Would it be about membership? Would it be about curriculum? Would it be about physical activity? Whatever those subcommittees are, we would work with her as far as direction. Um, but like what we talked about, it wouldn't, it would, we need to make sure that we protect for FERPA reasons any student names or any names of parents through the process, but there wouldn't be any reason why to keep things from the group. So that's how we would work it.
ぐらいです。<笑>That we not wait until because our meetings are so spread out. There's a three month gap, right?、Yes. Potentially up to three months. So I would like that that be worked in between and not necessarily wait until you're setting the agenda. So when、That's、you get that、advice. in, there needs to be a certain expectation, a week or a few. I mean, whatever you think is appropriate.、Um, but there needs to be some type of a time frame as opposed to just before each meet next week. That's good advice. Yeah, I think that's really good.、Um, my thought when someone is. Contacting us, that we reply very timely and very promptly、um, with, you know, thank you for your, thank you for reaching out to us. You know, we are going to connect you with so and so or whoever the, the team is to bring that community member in so that they can work collaboratively. The idea is is to increase engagement、mm-hmm. um, and transparency with concerns. And so,、um, and with that, it would be really nice、um, because every email that gets sent to the shack will be presented in the community forum. Um, at each meeting, it would be really nice if we could get all of those concerns that were brought forward、um, addressed if we were able to do it. And if we weren't, we could bring it for the shack and say, look, we have worked on this.、Um, you know, what do you guys think as a group would be the best way to tackle this problem? Or how do we increase engagement on this matter? Or you know, whatever the, the thing that's brought forward. So that's my vision with this.、Um, and I think that's cons- very consistent with what Texas DSHS asked for the shack to do to represent the, you know, the community values and concerns. Any other thoughts or feedback? Okay.、Um, okay. And then、um, on Section 3C of the agenda, the discussion of community feedback with the instructional resource lesson.、Um, I'm going to toss over to Dr. Upshaw. And so、um, this was a, a really good insight to share with the district that the district took very seriously. And、um, as a result of the inconsistency with、um, some of the content in Goodhart Wilcox, specifically Section 4.2,、um, Dr. Upshaw's team took over that. I, mean, I shouldn't say took over, because you're already over it, but really took that concern seriously. And so her team is working,、um, and I'll let you elaborate on what you guys are doing. There was a community. Concerned with an individual lesson from the supplement. And I think one thing that I wanted to share with the group that we shared with this individual that reached out to us, and I've also talked to members of the Compliance Committee about it, is that when we adopt a textbook through the State Board of Education, it is not 100% aligned to the Texas educational standards, which are ATEKS. And this specific lesson, when he brought up that it was a concern, we went right away to look at it and we、uh, noticed that it spoke about a certain topic that is not even in one of the standards. So we were able to address it and able to send notification to our teachers that this lesson will not be taught. And I just wanted to clarify that that's what we've learned through this process is that although with great intent, any book that comes towards、uh, adoption in this particular, it's not 100% aligned. But、uh, we were able to, in that moment,、um, act and certify and、uh, reassure this community member that it would not be taught in Conroe ISD. So we did take care of it. Do you want to elaborate more also on the scope and sequence? Yes. This is not my language. For,、yes. I'm not an educator, but that process and what you guys are doing to help reassure community pe- members that are concerned about、um, incongruence between the TEKS and Good Heart Wilcox. So, normally, when we go through a process of adoption, the standards、um, they're, they're looked at by the state, and it's almost a two year process. So, the year before they become adopted, there brings a committee, the State Board of Education brings forth a committee of educators that go through the standards, and then they align any resource that's out there for the state to see its alignment. And then that gets chosen for a supplemental book for us to purchase through proclamation. Right? The, state of Tex- the state of Texas offers these books that say they are certified by the staff and the State Board of Education that they've met a certain type of alignment. 
Then from there, we go through the process as a school district. In this particular case, anything that has to do with health curriculum, the SHAC oversees that with us, which was the process we did last year. What kind of was a hiccup is this past year is when those standards are adopted, we usually have uh, the textbook is adopted and we go through the process in February, March, and we're able to bring a teacher committee in and then the teacher spends all summer coming through and aligning what's called the scope and sequence. Since we already know that not all books that are on the State Board of Adoption list are 100% aligned, we take our standards and we pace, right? This lessons will be taught this, this will be taught like the third week of the nine, or the first nine weeks, that type of stuff. There was a halt in the standards in the state of Texas for health teaks this past summer. We did not get any release from the state to after we had already had district wide. So we didn't even know we were going to teach as was with a new resource till after August. So what we've done is we have convened and that's why we, it took us a while to get that PowerPoint together, then come to the shack and so on and so forth. But what we're doing, and Wade's already met with the first group Mr. Haymark has, we bring a teacher of health teachers and we look at the resource and we scope and sequence the alignment. And we're able to tell teachers, this lesson is aligned, this lesson is not aligned. And we teach our teachers, right? Because when you think about what's a process, the books get to go, a teacher might pick it up and go, oh, lesson 2.1, 2.2, 2.0. We have to make sure to help our teachers understand that this lesson is not a lesson that we align. We do the same thing with any resource we recommend um, to be used in any kind of lesson. So we are in the process of that. We have our first meeting done. And so we should be able to make sure that every lesson that's taught is one that is aligned with the standards. So uh, thank you, Mr. Haymark and Dr. Upshaw for taking that action with removing things that don't line up with these. Thank you. So like the following year, two years from now, so what you're saying is this, like you took an, you sent an email out mm -hmm. to immediately rectify it, but down the road, you'll have other systems in place to <coughs> prevent that section from being taught, right? It sounds like. So I think what you're asking is if, what if I have a new teacher that's assigned to that subject, okay. then how do they know? Well, if they're brand new at the beginning of the year, we, we have something called an introduction to CISD and they spend a whole day with Mr. Waymark in this particular case, going over their resources, where to access the resource and, and looking at the scope and sequence and discussing these concerns. If it might be, let's say mid semester, then we become aware of that so we can communicate with, with the faculty. So that's why when uh, Ms. Kersey had asked, how do the teachers get communicated that uh, Mr. Haymark in this particular ha case has a list of Health One teachers that he keeps active so he can make sure it gets communicated, whether it's the parent forms that we have to sign or it's a curriculum to be taught. So yes, we try to do our due diligence. So, you know, I went up to, I went up here and I, I looked at some books and thank you Mr. Hanworth for letting me review that. Mm -hmm. And I did notice some other things in those books that, you know, I didn't love, but regarding the process you know, I looked at last year's Jack's meetings and stuff, and I feel like it uh, basically went, you know, part of the compliance committee meeting. And, you know, I look at you know, SB004, and it requires an annual review of the health curriculum. So could we do another look at this, could Hart Wilcox, so we can make sure that, is this what we really want, or is there something better that we, Want that aligns with teats you know because earlier like last year i wasn't part of shack but you know there were 14 people that voted for goodhart wilcox and there's like roughly 40 people at shack so our bylaws don't say that there's a quorum you know so technically it's within the bylaws but you know it it seemed like it to me it lacked well not the well, I think it could, I think we could just explore and find something else because there are other districts that haven't approved this. Um, so I, I don't know when the appropriate time would be, but you know, I would like, and I can talk about it during the compliance part too, if you want, if that would be better. But that would be my request is we only explored one health curriculum. Could we look at others to see if there's something else that wants to 
Yeah, there's nothing that stops any person on the committee from bringing forth concerns and solutions. Um, and so it sounds like you're motivated to do that. So I would encourage you, if, you know, as a community and as a shack, um, we have to be comfortable with what's happening and being taught with our students. Um, I, it's brought Goodhart Wilcox aligns to the NSES standards, which are in opposition, not in opposition. They are they are not fully aligned to our Texas, our TEKS. Um, so I, I don't think that it's a bad idea to think about other things, um, but certainly it's well within your right to bring those things forward for sure. And, and the NSES is National Sex Education Standards. It's uh, quite interesting to read. So. I think what, what you're asking, is there any time that as we annually review this, we could, let's say that this is, you look at that health course and let's say 60% of what we teach is coming out of the book, but there's a supplementary resource that we'd like to use to enhance this particular standard. That is okay. We do that normally in any concept, whether it's a reading concept or it's a math concept or so on and so forth. So that is completely okay to be able to review annually. The big adoption or the big proclamation, we should call, that we go through that huge process and we go through the board and so on and so forth, that is, um, that's something that's done through the state through what's called the proclamation. But that doesn't mean we can't find something great supplementary that we can add. Absolutely. So the answer is yes, we can do that. And whenever the appropriate time would be, I mean, that would be my, my thing is to make a motion to explore other curriculums to make sure that this is this is a you know I, I watched the state board of education when they approved the good hard Wilcox you know not everybody liked it um, roughly 30 districts in Texas don't quote me uh, out of a thousand I mean, maybe that's more now have adopted it and not so not everybody likes that so that you know at some point when the appropriate time is I would make a motion to explore other curriculums to make sure that is this really what we want or is there something better? So, and I can do it later, probably later. I think it I think it overlays really well with what the compliance committee is presenting yeah. and, and the concerns. And um, with or without a motion, there's nothing that ever stops any person from getting involved and bringing forth information that we think might help our students. So, um, you know, we appreciate what you're doing. Um, any other comments about the community feedback and what we're, what's happening with Goodhart Wilcox right now? Anything? Yes. somehow get a chance to review it. You know, I, I came up here to the school, it wasn't fun to sit here and flip through it. And I looked at the sex, uh, or the human sexuality curriculum as well. So I would encourage you to look at that. But the one was uh, gender identity, section 4.2. And Goodhart Wilcox uses terminology that adheres to NSES, National Sex Education Standards. I would encourage you to look at that. And um, there's concern that does it or doesn't it meet community values? You know, I've got that concern. So. And I would add, <clears throat> excuse me, I would add there's terminology, terminology utilized in that section that again, I think um, the question is whether that matches community values. My thought is it doesn't. So I also, similar to Garrett, have I think there's some good things about Goodhart Wilcox, but I also have some concerns. And so my thought is, is there something better that we can all just agree is factual health information and we don't have to cringe about certain sections or try to work around certain sections? I think it would be helpful for you guys to be more specific, doing very big generalities. Uh, and if I'm mistaken here, correct me, but I believe in Goodhart Wilcox that by fifth grade, they want to introduce the students to gender identity. You know, you're not a boy or, or a girl, you're whatever the hell you think you are, uh, which is insane. 
They want to introduce uh, puberty blockers by fifth grade. Um, that's just two things that I mean, I'm, I'm not as knowledgeable as a few of the other people who are in this, but any of that kind of stuff is insanity as far as I'm concerned. So I, I think Goodhart Wilcox, so I went through and flipped through every page, and it's like a thousand pages. So I did not necessarily see those mentioned, but Goodhart Wilcox aligns with NSES which very much dives into all of that and much more. And so what NSES, sorry, I may be not, what is NSES? Okay, um, is a national organization. And so what their expectations are very much what he just described and more. And so the concern I also have is, okay, we have this, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we have this edition of Goodhart Wilcox. Well, what's the next edition look like? Because if you're aligned to a standard that doesn't match the views of our community, they're only going to add in additional things. Is the current one enough? Um, probably not. They're going to add additional content in, I think, each edition, and it's a slippery slope. And so that's my concern with it is um, in the current form, I think there's plenty of chapters that are good. I also have some plenty of concerns too, and I'm happy to elaborate. I don't know if this is the time, but, um, you know, so I'm not sold on it. Um, the, I don't recall seeing puberty blockers, homework blockers, that, that's in NSES. Um, but the thing is, Goodhart Wilcox complies, they say they comply with the terminology. That's not specific. Texas is, is a special health curriculum that Goodhart Wilcox made. And so it's, it's, it's going to be far different than what you would see like in California, way different. But there's still some concerns there's still gender, uh, gender neutrality, like pregnant people. Well, if you think that a man can get pregnant, you're the same. There, there is gender neutral terms throughout, like pregnant people, pregnant persons, and stuff. So, you know, I, I encourage, we're all on chat. I mean, the the SB004, the section M somewhere down there, it tells, says we should annually review this curriculum. So, you know, it's good. It's a good discussion we're having because it's part of the state law and to have this discussion. So just because it was voted on last year doesn't mean we shouldn't revisit this. We, we really should revisit this every year. It sounds like something that just has to be made. You know, we'll never arrive at a curriculum that is foolproof for you know, years to come. Right. Yeah, I agree. And then um, I just said, circle back to um, Dr. Upshaw and what her team is doing, you know, the results, if you will, for lack of a better phrase, of what she finds will be available to the shack. So we can see where we're not aligning, where Good Heart Wilcox doesn't align with TEKS and what the district is going to do about that. So as a shack, we can come alongside um, the the district and, um, and the board and help, you know, express our opinions on what's, what should go or what should stay or what should be added or whatever the summary statements are for that. But her team is working on it. Um, and, you know, there has to be a diplomatic process in addressing whatever the concerns are. And I think that that's what they're doing. Okay. Does it make sense to have part, the those of us that are interested in participating, does it make sense that we participate in the process and not on the tail end? Because to me, that seems inefficient. I would think as you're going through and looking at things, does it make sense that we're kind of like feathering into that process at certain points to help feedback our concerns so that while you're matching up, does TEKS match, you know, these different sections, we can also look at, well, these are our concerns. Where, how do we address those as we go through? You know, one of the things that I'm thinking about as I'm hearing is that there, there is things that being able to go specifically and looking at the textbook like some of you have done to see what exactly is the issue and then going, does this align? And then go, us going, no, that doesn't meet a standard. We won't teach that lesson. I think that's fair for us to be able to look at our scope and sequence and then say, these are the specific lessons we're going to teach. Are there any lessons that we have concerns with and why and have that discussion? And then, like we've said, is that throughout the, throughout the, the existence of this textbook, the last time that we adopted any new standards or a textbook, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Haymark, 12 years, 13 years. So um, that's one thing that it, it, it's a long process. So I can imagine through the last 13 years, there's gonna be any supplementary resource that the SHAC committee could say, do we wanna add this to the lesson? Does it meet in line to the TEKS is a supplementary resource. 
Just because we've adopted Goodhart Wilcox as the primary text doesn't mean we can't have a supplementary resource we want, right? Um, that's just something to consider. Another thing to consider is if there's a second edition, when, when the state of Texas has put this book on the list, it's this edition of the book. So I wanna make sure I clarify that as there's the, I'm gonna make this up, the 15th edition and we adopted the 14th edition, they just can't give us the 15th edition. Am I, am I making any sense? Because we've adopted the 15th edition of the book. And if they do, they need to notify us. And that's something that the State Board of Education has put very clear here recently to any kind of publisher that's putting things in. You just don't get to substitute because we wanna make sure what we're saying, we're purchasing is aligned is what they've done their due diligence about. So that's kind of, you can go, okay. So once we've gone through and we've cleared for what we think might be a concern, or this is something that aligns and we would like to see, then we can go through that. So yes, Ms. Kersey, I think it's okay for us to have that. And if it's something that is a subset of the compliance group, which is, and we wanna meet with that subcommittee and say, this is what we're doing and how we're doing it, by all means, we can. We can. I have Google as my resource of researching. I, I imagine you have more robust tools to and more access to more curriculum than, than I do, right? Do you have more tools at your disposal to find alternative or supplemental? Absolutely, okay. for anything and everything. But it goes back to in the change of any new standards and any new textbook before we just say let's open it to the world or the nation of what we're gonna we trust the state's process that they're gonna do its due diligence of have a teacher committee that's done the vetting in other words it doesn't make it to the list unless it's had a certain percentage of alignment and then it has been our practice as a school district that we don't adopt a primary text that is not on the State Board of Education. And you can see now why, because of what could be interpreted, not be aligned, so on and so forth. So, but I go back to, it's not 100% aligned. Mm -hmm. And what you'll notice is some of these lessons that we might be concerned with would be like, we're not teaching that. It's not a teak, right? And so we just have to be clear that we all can rest that we're okay with, that we're okay with that. Or if there's a concern to a lesson, is there a supplementary resource that we approve of that we could use instead to teach that lesson? It does, it does get interesting because I watched the State Board of Education when they adopted Cooper Wilcox, and somebody there that was in favor of it said, well, if you don't like it, you can go do your own thing. So, so you're saying that the district has a policy, has to go through whatever curriculum has to go through the SBOE, but SBOE is saying, Thing, provided it complies with. So, so they said you don't have to. You we know, don't. But that's school, but that's school policy. It's a, it's a practice. It's a it's a practice. Okay. Yeah, it's not a policy. It's a practice. The the mm -hmm. the law says that the board of trustees has to consider the student health advisory council and the recommendation of any health curriculum. Um, and I'm paraphrasing, um, but that's you know we come alongside as an advisory body to the board for what we think represents community values, and I think all of your points are really well taken. Um, to his credit, there was quite a bit of um, uh, divisions, not the most perfect word to insert in the sentence, but just back and forth with different board members over Goodhart Wilcox. And so I, I think that the concern is is sincere mm -hmm. and, le and legitimate. Huh? State board. I'm sorry, state, state board, state board. State. Sorry. yeah. I'm so sorry. Um, I, the idea that everybody was just sort of cheering this textbook into classrooms, that is not the case. Um, and so I think as a district and as a community, we're doing what our responsibilities are to make sure that we're representing the community values, we're teaching our students the system with TEKS, and we're working together as a group. And that's really where the heart of this group needs to stay focused on so we can make progress for the students of CISD. So. Yeah. Uh, maybe, I know you're saying that they don't have the um, discuss the That would be the process of a scope and sequence is to help with our teachers understand 
this is the lesson we teach for that particular standard. Okay. So it might be talk about <coughs> I'm not understanding your question. I apologize. So it's, the problem was, at least from what I read from the back and forth emails or whatever, was that they were saying, you know, their concerns were that they're teaching, like their concern is that we're teaching this, right? And that that's not the standard and like it goes against whatever. So, and they brought up those legitimate concerns. But my question is, are we even doing that? Like, or was it a misunderstanding? Like it was a mis I, I I caught up. Okay. okay, it was a misunderstanding, and I think Ms. Kersey has clarified some of that. The national standards that were were being expressed, they're saying that Goodhart Wilcox, our Goodhart Wilcox edition, does not include those concerns. Okay, and am, that was am, am I making question. sense? Yes. Yes. So I think the of concerns like that are not because if it's not in the textbook, because I was like, well, I've read a lot of textbooks. So I could, you know, if people needed help, I don't mind like looking through it to see like from that level, like from a health level, like, you know, the facts and all that. But if there, if it's not even in the edition that's there, then it's, I guess it's not really a concern. Then. Yeah, I think, I think there's two things, two questions happening right now. I think the one question is the NSES standards that are, that are not aligned with TEKS and are present in some editions of the Goodhart Wilcox. Yeah. And then there are the sections of our current Goodhart Wilcox text that are not aligned with TEKS, do have some flavoring of NSES, like section 4.2, which is very much in the text, um, and getting clarification on the district for what should and shouldn't be taught based off the TEKS. And so Dr. Upshaw's team, if correct me if I'm misunderstanding, but Dr. Upshaw's team is going through the whole textbook and the companion text to make sure that the only thing that it goes to our students is what aligned with the TEKS. That's concern, you know, A, if you will, and concern B is that Goodhart Wilcox, as an author and a publisher, endorses an SES, which does, is not congruent with Texas in general. And so it's hard, you know, if you, if you cook food a certain way, and even though you try not to cook it the way you kind of want to cook it, it's still sort of baked in there, I think, is the concern of people um, who are expressing um, difference with NSES being embedded in, even if mildly, into the Goodhart Wilcox text because it comes from the same publishing company. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things we've done is address each individual that has that concern, just like Mr. Costello and Ms. Kersey are saying, we are open to be able to show you the book, come see, we're op open to talk to you about it. I do know in this particular case, both Mr. Haymark and I met with this individual to go through some of the concerns and explain the process and showed well, that it wasn't present. And what was the main concern, which was the lesson that we mentioned, was removed. We told teachers we will not be teaching that. So he was happy to hear that we were actionable. But yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, I've never heard of that being part of the, kind of in their high school. Like, yeah, well, in like fifth grade, like I think um, you have to, have to look at like when children get to puberty those, you know, yeah. I think those are the basic things that they need to learn, so, yeah, of what that is, and how we talked about it at our last meeting, you know, the videos and all that. Right, right. Any other comments from the Okay, um, so the updates from the subcommittees. In November, um, I tasked, that's his responsibility for, for the tasking, um, of creating some subcommittees to get some work done in regards to the SHAC. And the four subcommittees that um, got into action were the bylaws, compliance, membership, and physical, act physical activity and fitness. Um, so each group has an update. Um, Mrs. Keller was going to update with the bylaws committee. She cannot be here tonight, um, so I'm going to do her update for her. That's this printed black and white copy um, paper. And basically, um, this is a summary document of what the committee has done from November to present. Um, we had three meetings, and um, the meeting started out where I had presented um, the current bylaws and then what was recommended by TEC 28004 as well as um, Texas DSHS and what should be within the content of our bylaws. 
And so um, that is for, not for mine, Miss Blaylock, sorry. Um, okay, so over the course of these meetings, over the last couple of months, um, we have completely revised the bylaws. Um, we intended for them to be ready for you all tonight. Um, that's why you'll see the date on the back form so it would be ready for full shack review. There are two pending items um, regarding descriptions of what the board of trustees mm -hmm. would prefer, the route of communication. They would prefer the shack to exercise. So we have a clear, um, a clear link on how we should con be communicating with them about concerns, questions, things like that. I have not heard back yet. Um, on that and then some descriptions on what all of the responsibilities will be for the district coordinator in that position um, and then one final gloss over and the intention would be to have these bylaws out to the full shack committee um, in the next couple weeks so you guys have time to read them um, do a full review and um, notice and comment period um, and then we'll schedule a special meeting I know everybody likes meetings so I thought we should add another one and um, we'll go over the bylaws if anyone has specific concerns, you, you know, that way things can be talked about and it doesn't monopolize, you know, a main shack meeting. We have other shack business to take care of. Um, so stay tuned on your email. What you should be expecting to see is the old bylaws, the current red line version, and then the new version without the red line so it's easier to read. And we really want sincere feedback and then we'll schedule a special meeting that anyone can come to on the shack to um, ask about questions or language or um, any feedback at all. So, any questions? And then just a shout out to everybody who was on that committee, Ms. Bingham, Mr. Costello, Mr. Davidson, Ms. Keller, Mr. LaBelle, and um, Ms. Eric. I want to check out Ms. Keller, did a great job on being our team on that. Uh, yeah. I also wanted to force out for everybody, it's like 14 pages long. Yes, it is. Grab a coffee or your beverage of choice and settle in. Fun. <laughs> okay, um, compliance. Uh, Mr. Costell, you want to give the update from the compliance committee? Yes. So the compliance subcommittee met on January 10th. These notes are part of the, the thing that Mr. Hamar sent out, but I will just recap them. Uh, one thing we want to do is just look at historical attendance just to see because the current bylaws say that like 50% attendance or whatever so if they're basically if there's people that haven't showed up for the last six meetings mm -hmm. um, maybe we just take a look have the membership committee look at that and because uh, maybe there's other people that want to join Shack. and then so number two is basically um, Dr. Spear, I believe, was going to reach out and ask for historical correspondence from the, to the trustees because there's an annual for SB004, there's an annual requirement at a minimum that Shaq sends the Board of Trustees an update. Item number three is what I mentioned earlier, SB004 Section M. And really just to recap, a look at compliance as just following our bylaws, our current ones that we have in place, and two, are we compliant with state law? So item number three is basically just, hey, let's do an annual review of our health curriculum for, you know, from section M of SB004, just to, you know, so we can be compliant. And number four, I think this was addressed with the slides we just voted on. Also. Or wait. For that one too on number four um so when we were looking when i looked through the textbook for good heart well as well as the um the slides that we approved i think probably there's some inconsistencies in terms of look we're telling the parents in the opt-in form all the material on these slides is from good heart well Fox, and that I don't think that's 100 percent true i think some of the graphics and things i'm guessing it's because you had half a second to put all that together right so yes. Understood, um, but I would like to go back through and just make sure that the graphics and things in there are tied so that we're consistent in telling parents, this is the approved resource, this is only from the approved resource, is the material that's ending up in the slides. And then, so I have not done that yet, but that's on the to-do. And by the way, I'm just recapping this, but there were uh, four people in a meeting. These aren't just my idea. These are various people weighing in. And a member raised a concern that the human sexuality slides are not compliant 
with TEC 28004. So um, it, it does, you know, lend a discussion about just continuous improvement. So um, I think on that point, <clears throat> also, Garrett, when we read the emails from the community member, um, there were two things. There was the section 4.2, which we've already discussed, but there was also a concern that um, we don't have enough abstinence. Um, and, you know, to really say that we are compliant with um, TEC 2804, right? And so I do think there's, and maybe that's adding to some of the resources you talked about, like, is there a good, you know, some slides or something that we can kind of beef up our current presentation to be more abstinent focused? Because I do think it's light. I agree with the community member on that regard. Well, right. And because you can keep referring to SB 004, it says a majority of the content has to be on absent. So it's, you know, it's basically just trying to be compliant with, with yep. the law. And there is question, I, I have question whether the majority of the content is, but, but on that note, I mean, I, I think this thing's going to be a continuous working process because, you know, there could be so much opportunity for enhancement. So, you know, an example, bad example maybe but abstinence is good or this is bad but you know what are some of the compelling cases that we could add <coughs> to that for supplementary so it, it kind of goes back in line is there a supplemental material that can be considered um, as we're looking at the compliance of the you know, human sexuality slides Any That's other? the end. I mean, that That's was it. all okay. the updates for the compliance. <laughs> Anybody have any questions or comments on that? Uh, I would like to ask, maybe it's a silly question, but the students have access to the to the book or they receive copies or I don't know how 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 that? I think that's a great question. It's really well suited for Mr. Yeah, Rainmark. Uh, they do have if the student is enrolled in the health one course, they do have online access to the textbook. It's through their SSO account. Good Art Book Office has a tab. We, we set up the tab through our SSO and has online access to the textbook only, not the companion piece. It's only the main text. So we have to be careful with that because if we if we are giving the student some PowerPoint regarding abstinence, abstinence but the book says something different. There is some incongruence there, yes, right? They don't have access to that material. That's in the companion piece. All the, uh, all the material in the PowerPoint was taken from the companion piece created by the district, but the students do not have access to that companion piece. Only the main text. Ms. Frosty, are you asking about the, the, uh, the health curriculum? Yes. And they have access to that? The health curriculum, yes. So that's what you're saying. Yes, I, 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 that's what I was saying. So, it, because sometimes we say, okay, we are going to teach this in this way, but if in the book it's the other way and the student has access to that way of the book, so it's some incongruence between what the teacher is saying and what the student is reading from the book, right? So maybe that's why we have to look for this book. Maybe it's not that appropriate, right? I, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I'm going to see if I can help you out in getting more specific. I think it was 4.3 mentioned was, was not in compliance. Mm -hmm. So if that's in the main book, we, and if the kids get online, it's 4.2 ripped out of the online version, which is still there. Can you do that? Yeah. The online version? Is the, um, am I correct, wait, you can't? No, the online is just, it's just a, like a, it's a electronic copy of the textbook. You can't manipulate to pull anything out to mm -hmm. copyright long. You can't pull anything out of that. But in my opinion, that's a parenting issue at that point. I mean, if a child's accessing it online, you know, online, I mean, we're monitoring our children at home with what they're watching, what they're looking at. You know, 
Yeah, but if um, you're saying you have an assignment and your child, my, my kids all the time log into mm -hmm. SSO at home and they have an assignment and they're going on and interfacing with whatever material is on there, I'm not over their shoulder looking. I know they're on SSO, right, from their Chromebook, but I'm not looking at, are you in section 4.1 or section 4.2? Right. So I but, don't think that's maybe realistic to expect parents yeah. to oversight that much. I think, I think that's the a lot. Goal, I think the goal is to encourage the parents to trust the district and the information that is being given to our students. So, um, you know, I, I'm not sure that that is, is probably the best way to phrase well, what we're intending. Dr. Upshaw, um, this this does pose an interesting thing that Ms. Brodsky mentioned. A um, couple things with this. I, I mentioned earlier I'd want to do a motion to review and explore other health curriculums and human sexuality, but maybe we make a recommendation. I may have to just make a motion because currently health is required by CIC to graduate. So. Basically, you know, it's an interesting discussion. So I will, I'll make a motion, I move, that we explore other health curriculums. In the meantime, you know, we make a recommendation to the Board of Trustees that health is not a requirement to graduate until we can get our arms around this a little bit better. So that is a motion. And maybe there's a more appropriate time to do that. Um, so just to be clear, it, you're asking, you're making a motion to reevaluate other options for health curriculum, That's and that right. would be a task of the sub of the subcommittee for compliance. You know, it could be. It doesn't have to be compliance; just a shack, just overall shack, and maybe there's a special committee that works on that. But you know, it is part of state law that we reevaluate it, and if there's any modification or changes, it's right here. Um, you know, that the Board of Trustees is aware of that. So I think, you know, in all fairness, you know, this thing got approved with 14 people in attendance last April out of probably over 40 people. And two voted no or abstained or whatever. So 12, I think, until we get our arms around this, because Ms. Prosky does raise an interesting point, you know, we can make a recommendation to the trustees, it's up to them. That it's not a requirement to graduate. If you want your kids in it, that's fine, but it'll just, this addresses your concern or other parents' concerns too. So the motion is review and find or explore other curriculums to present the shack. And two, we make a recommendation to the school board that it's not a requirement to graduate. And at that point, it's up to the school board. I think those should be two separate motions. They're both tied together. Mm -hmm. And I do have a question that if there was a motion to um, not make, not recommend health as a requirement for the students of CISD, given that we're already in the middle of a semester, that would not be effective until the board reviewed it sometime over the summer and then implemented later in the year. Is that right? Am I missing something? I'm actually, I'm actually gonna ask yeah. Dr. Povich, which yeah. he's Perfect. Dr. Povich Yay. to comment Thank about you. the health course because yeah. there's more things that are taught in that course. Um, Chris Bowes, I'm the assistant superintendent of high schools. First off, once again, I'm Chris Povich. I'm the assistant superintendent for high schools. One thing I would say, regardless of talk about health or any other course, if you're going to change it, remember there's a lot of implications. And generally, when we change graduation requirements, it starts with an incoming freshman class. And the reason being is because of GPA, class rank, and all that stuff. You wouldn't change something midstream because that could have some serious consequences on the kids who already took, for example, in this case, health and those who have it yet on a cohort. So if you're going to change something, generally speaking, uh, in this district, you change it with an incoming cohort. That way it's fair to all students and all parents on the GPA requirement, because I deal with a lot of GPA questions. I'm just telling you today, um, working on stuff. So that's one thing there on that.
The other thing you have to remember about health, um, I remember many years ago working at the high schools that uh, health used to be paired up with speech communication applications, and those were requirements. And the state took those requirements away and said you didn't have to, and the district elected that Com Apps, our speech is no longer a requirement. But the reason why, and I'm giving you the history here, the reason why health was kept is there was a lot of other things that have to be taught to all students before they graduate. For example, one of them is CPR. Where do you put that in? And where do you ensure that all kids get that curriculum? It fits nicely into health. And that's why health is kept. There's many other things that are um, taught within that course. And one way to ensure that every kid gets it before graduation is making it a graduation requirement. Um, that's the history behind health. So I just wanna let you all see a little bit on that. And it's not so easy to just say, we're gonna be done with health this year. Um, that would be something that the board would have to face in. And if they say so, we'll do it. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's my job. We'll make sure. I have a question for you. Um, because the concerns brought forth by community members are that um, some of the content within the current health instruction is not consistent with personal or family community values or personal beliefs. Um, do parents have the option right now to have their child complete the health course using a different course besides the Goodhart Wilcox that's offered within the district? No, I have not seen that. Okay. No, ma'am. Is that, would that be something that would be difficult for the district to accommodate? Or it might just be easier if you could just take it off of the SSO. They only I think that's the key piece, right? Is that we want to know kind of where it lands ultimately. 
and then move forward from there. But I don't think what Dr. Upshaw is doing in her team is necessarily addressing the community comments that are being presented today. She's aligning fatigues, super important, but not necessarily addressing the concerns we have with the health curriculum. I think we should Those are two both. separate exercises. I think they can be, that's what I was trying to say before, I think they can be married, but I think they're two separate goals, right? Right, and, and along with what Lady Canada was saying, um, so we have the actual textbook here. Now, if there are portions in the textbook that we don't want taught, I mean, can they be redacted? So we have to include They're not there. I like the idea of, I think what you guys had said about taking it off the electronic. If we don't think they're using it anyways for health, that seems easy to take out the SSO element, use the in-classroom books. Mm -hmm. To me, that scratches most of the itch, but that's my two cents. And I, I think we should, you know, I would move that we explore other health curriculum options and make people just simplify that motion and we can move on if I get a second. Yeah. Well, it doesn't. So we can make the motion, but nothing's stopping any member from doing that research and bringing it forward. Yeah, so I just wanted to make it more formal. official. So, like Shaq is doing this. We have, sure. Okay. We we made a motion. There was a second, maybe, hopefully, we took a vote, and this is the direction we're heading. And just to make it official for Doctor. Yeah, I feel like it falls under complaints, right? Or as or it can be a, its own task force too. So Mr. Castell has made a motion um, to in investigate other options. Second, okay. Um, all in favor? So, no. Um, so, this is one, just to look at other yeah, this is just to look at other options. Yeah, we're yes, we're not to get rid of health, just to look at other options. Um, yes, it okay. works. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So sorry. Thank you. Okay. So actually, it looks like. Oh, so how many? Y'all raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it looks like all, and then I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but. Yes. Oh, okay. Got it. Um, all right, so that passes. And Bryce, perhaps you yes, can do what we did for the subcommittees, mm -hmm. which is send a Google form that says, are you interested in participating in this? And if it's a party of one or a party of many, that's fine. And just see who's interested in, in putting some time into it. Yep, we'll do that. I'd like also, also to add, just for our CISD personnel, when looking at the subcommittees, we didn't have any volunteers to help our parents on the group. So if you are interested, they are welcome and they are welcoming you to be part of some of these subcommittees too, since you are uh, part of uh, part of that group as well. So just not only the curriculum crew, but I wanted to give a shout out because I asked Dr. Spear, Mike, did you hear anything from our people? And she said, no. So if you are interested in joining some of these subcommittees, please reach out to Dr. Spear. Yes, we'd be happy. Um, okay, so then moving on. Um, membership. Um, Ms. Kersey, you want to give the update for the membership subcommittee? Yes, and real quick, there was a slide, this is back under the compliance umbrella, um, there was a slide that Wade had included about um, TEC compliance, so I'll just touch on it real quickly. Um, it's evolved from this, this was sort of the rough draft and it's evolved, so um, I met with Dr. Upshaw and we went through for and our goal was, okay, we have this big packet of TEC 28004, and it has lots of requirements. How can we simplify that down? So we're down to a two-page document that summarizes all the expectations and legal directives uh, for TEC 28004, what those requirements are, what the district and, and SHAC have done uh, in the past to meet those requirements, and then if there's any questions or things kind of lingering. So it's not ready um, quite yet. I think maybe a couple more hours and we'll be close. Um, so we'll send it out to you all just so you can see. I thought it was super helpful as someone new to Shaq. I read 2804 and it seemed overwhelming. So I liked the idea of a summary two-pager. So hopefully you all agree. Um, but then I think the question becomes, okay, this is what we've done historically. Is that working? Are there things we want to do better? Um, do we want to beef up certain sections? So I think that'll allow us to have discussions, more pointed discussions on what our responsibilities are and what we want to do going forward as a group. So that's all on that one. Okay, membership. Um, so we had a membership subcommittee meeting 
And I'll just run through, um, wait, if we can go to the um, application and selection um, document first, please. So the things that we talked about in our subcommittee meeting, <clears throat> again, as a new SHAC member, um, it was a little unclear to me what the process was, and um, I love processes, so it's important to me to understand them and then be able to go and execute it. So, um, so if we can go back to the prior document. There we go, perfect. Um, so this is a one-pager, and it just um, summarizes what does our recruitment process look like. So those first two bullets there explain in May 1st, we're going to advertise for recruiting for SHAC. So that's advertising um, in our administrative offices with um, paper as well as online through the different social media channels that CISD has. Um, the next couple bullets there are talking about um, for new members what the process is. So the expectation is that new members will fill out the application, similar to what we did in prior years. And um, then that last section there which says by June 30th, um, we'll have basically a a Google form that goes out to everyone that's currently on Shack, just to understand what is your intention for next year. Do you want to continue participating? Do you want to not participate so that we have a better understanding of how many vacancies we're going to have on the Shack? Um, so that's the top part there. And the second part, um, under membership evaluation and selection process, is just explaining that once um, July 1st rolls around, the application process will close and we'll move into the selection process. And so we'll go through um, using the um, DSHS is a guide that gives us some qualities to look for, and you'll see those listed there, the bullets at the bottom. And those are directly copied out of DSHS, uh, which is the SHAC guide for us. And um, we'll then go through, once we understand how many vacancies, then we'll start our selection process. Um, and then from there, that gets recommended to the board, who ultimately is the one who approves, who's selected for SHAC. So, as an engineer, I just like things documented, so this was helpful to me. Hopefully, you all agree. Um, so, uh, if there's not any, I guess, is there any questions on the document or anything you think was missing? Okay. So, my thought here tonight was to approve this if everyone um, is on board and doesn't have any comments, and then we'll post that on our SHAC website just to clarify what the process is for the community and potential applicants. So I make a motion to vote to approve and put on our website. Um, second. second. And then um, all in favor? We're in the Okay, so moving on to the next document, which was the application. So our subcommittee, um, the membership subcommittee, looked at the existing application and we added some questions to help get us a better understanding of what the interests were of potential applicants. Um, so we'll just run through these quickly. You'll notice the second paragraph there um, just adds a couple of resources that I think um, being a new member would have been helpful. And so they're linked to uh, Texas Education Code 28004 as well as the um, chat guide. And so just to try to give potential applicants a better understanding of what are you getting yourself into? What does this group do? And so that's there for their reference if they wish to uh, read those. So moving into the application, it largely looks the same as last year's. We added a few questions at the top to better understand if there's potential conflicts of interest um, from a financial perspective or um, relationships to um, district employees. So you'll notice those questions there. Um, the section about the boxes, that's all the same as before. At the very pot, uh, bottom of the page, if you'll scroll down just a smidge, um, there's a couple of questions here asking about availability. Since it's this largely parent organization, I don't know if 4.30 is the best time for everyone, so we thought it would be helpful to understand um, you know, what folks would be available for time-wise. Um, moving to the second page, the question here, um, these are the eight sections. This is the same question as was on the prior application, no change there. Um, you'll notice that we did list the existing four subcommittees that we have so that we can understand if there's interest from potential applicants, if they're interested in any of these. And then the following question asks if they would be interested in a leadership role. 
on any of these. So just trying to glean like where are people interested so we don't end up with a bunch of people who are really into bylaws and nothing else, right? Not that that would happen. Um, so the next question, um, and this is directly from the Shack Guide. It's just listing some examples of how folks may interact with you. So trying to understand where are you getting exposure? Where do you, you know, so where are you coming from in terms of your um, interaction with our community youth? Um, the next question is exactly the same. No changes there for your experience and contribution to Shack. Um, the very bottom question we did add, it says, what do you see as the top issues for student health and well-being? And the idea here is kind of twofold. One, to get a perspective on what are some things that the community, whether they end up being a Shack member or not, but just get a pulse for what are the things we need to be aware of as a Shack? Um, and then also what are their specific, you know, interests and, and things that they feel like um, we need to focus on as a Shack? So, I know I went through that really quickly, um, but are there any questions? Yep. I'm really sorry, I have to go to NLC So I'm gonna make it really, really quick. Um, in your um, uh, part where you said that you are parent student or yep. um, if classroom teachers, yes, when I read it, it, it sounds like a staff member that is employed uh, five days a week. If we can include substitute, because I am a oh. substitute, so I get a little glance of a classroom and uh, and, uh, and then uh, I yeah, that's a good point. Uh, So I guess a couple comments, and I know you're getting ready to leave. Um, so the one of the items in TEC 2804 that Dr. Upshaw and I looked at was um, suicide and ways to help parents have awareness of risk factors and other things. And so I know there's things the district are doing, but we talked about um, as a chef, we need to understand, is it working? Is there more we can do? So I totally agree with that point. Um, and so that will be something that I think in the next meeting we're planning to discuss as a shack, like what is you know what has historically happened, and then is that adequate? Do we need to add to it? And then what resources we need to tap into for that topic? Um, the conflict of interest piece um, on the substitute. Um, well, I guess backing up. So the subcommittee piece. These are the four existing subcommittees, but I think correct me if I'm wrong, and um, Bryce, but we can add any subcommittee that people have interest for. So I don't think it's yeah. limited to that at all. These are just the four existing ones. But um, if there's interest in creating, you know, any topic really, I think it's within our wherewithal to do it. Did I understand your question? So you want another box for mental, mental health in the here? In subcommittee, there is interest to have a subcommittee. Um, if there is already work going, maybe uh, parent or community can help build that. So okay, so so not so up here on the back of the page. There's there's interest, yes. like nutrition. Do you want that up, up top? Or I think you... there, there is a counseling and mental health mm -hmm. there. I just wanted, I was proposing the idea of having a subcommittee mm -hmm. for that. We can start that right away. The subcommittees are open at any time. And we, as a shack, we can add a subcommittee that bubbles up and, and addresses things. We can make things formal subcommittees. Um, I 1,000% a, a agree with you. The mental health of our students is critical. I mean, these kids, they are our future and their health and well-being includes their mental health and um, I won't get on my soapbox with it, but I 100% agree with you. We will start that. Thank you so, so much for bringing that up. I think it's just so critical. So thank you. And we'll make that update. Sure. Yeah. And I guess your yeah. question real quick on the substitute, were you suggesting on the front page here to you, disclose that? Oh, okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other feedback or questions on the application? I was planning to. What were you thinking? I would argue. 
because it's not time sensitive, since we wouldn't post it out till May. But I think there's a lot of context with the bylaw release and like the limiting memberships, like the rubric that we talked about mm-hmm. in the last fall, that would probably be good to present like as a whole and have it voted on. Because then we also might change the application as we go through the rubric and, and go through that. So I, I think it would just be better to kind of present this one package for final vote. The rubric from what side? So we hadn't got into it yet. So in our subcommittee meeting, we talked about, okay, we have these qualities on the back of the, um, or in the, that are listed on the bottom of the selection and uh, application process. And they're kind of broad, right? I mean, it's hard necessarily to judge, um, does someone have a vested interest in the community? Are they honest? It's hard to judge that on an application. So the thought was, um, can we come up with a rubric that helps guide as we're looking at these applications helps guide our discussion and guides um, who we select and who we don't select. And so um, without tra- you know, in trying to limit personal bias, like what is the rubric that we can all agree on so that we come to the table in an aligned fashion to look at the applications. We don't have said rubric. That was a discussion um, was to go back and think about what that looks like. Um, so anyways, yes, we do not have that piece um, just yet. I just want to make sure, so I don't mind waiting on the application. I guess my only concern is we have to, we're starting May 1st, so there is a little bit of a time criticality. Like it can't be, you know, we wait months on this one because, you know, um, but if we think over the next month with the bylaw, what was the bylaw time frame? Remind me. Because I think um, if we wait until our next meeting to do this, which our next meeting is April, end of April, right? Um, that's a tight timeline to be, you know, if there happens to be comments or feedback, that's a real tight timeline. That's like four days <laughs> before, you know, we have to publish this. So I would just like to do it between now and the next meeting. So if we are comfortable with that, I'm okay with that. I just don't want to wait that long. I feel like we're going to be scrambling. I think this is pretty clear. Uh, and I think this is a good foundation. Yeah. We were going to change it, but well, we change it, but we have something up there for people. You know, so I would I would go to approve it tonight, and I'm totally open to change. I still don't know what this rubric is or what you're talking about exactly. I don't know the context of how it would change, but what I'm looking at right here was professional and good and clear. And I guess we could approve it and not post it until we have time if there's additional discussion. So that's another alternative. So that if there's not any additional you know modifications, then it's done and we post it. Does someone want to make a motion to approve the um, application with the currently stated amendments um, that Ms. Zadie um, brought forward to Second. that to the application? Okay. Uh, wait. Who, who made the motion? Um, uh, I'll motion what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lavelle. Uh, Mr. Lavelle. And then Mr. Davidson. Second? Yes. yes. Okay. And then um, all in favor? The motion passed, right? I'm oh, oh, sorry, I was taking sorry. notes. I wasn't looking, so, okay. <clears throat> and that's all I had for membership. Okay, that Thank was the you. highlights. Ms. Kersey. Mr. Haymark, do you want to do your updates oh, first? Uh, for sake of time, guys, I'm trying to put this kind of quick. I know it's often time to leave for the city and ask if it's your fans. So, the physical activity and fitness planning subcommittee met on January 9th. Uh, Dr. Chala, Mrs. Taylor, Mrs. Jones, myself met. And I thought it was important, the first thing, which is trying to give an overview 
of the activities and programs we already have in place at Connor IC to encourage extra activity and fitness amongst not just students, uh, but families and teachers and uh, community members. And so the top part of this list is all the things that we've had in place for years um, within Connor ISD. <clears throat> it's not every campus. It depends on the equipment needs of the campus. It depends on where they're located. Uh, one thing I will say is that if you look down towards the bottom of that first uh, list, the family game nights with traveling equipment, you know, we were very happy to be able to get back out and use our equipment again. Uh, after COVID. And one thing COVID did uh, raise much more interest in was the outdoor sports. And so we were able to purchase a, a whole fishing uh, equipment unit uh, for children to travel around, around the district. And we've had some coaches who come out and we had a family fishing, that's an example, family fishing night, where there's so many kids who've never held a fishing pole. They don't know how to cast, set a drag, tie a knot. And so we had the high school angler teams come out and work with the families. We had some uh, teachers that their dads brought their boats out, put the kids in the boat, cast from a boat, you know, all these great things. So it's just all these little subtle things that you know we really try to focus on and give kids extra exposure to, but not just the children, but the families to be a part of as well. So our family nights have really grown throughout the district. Some of y'all, maybe your children have been a part of that uh, this year as well. But what I want to do touch on is uh, the new things we've added for this year. We partnered with NFL Play 60, and uh, we had a uh, football kit for every elementary intermediate donated free of charge to all of our Conroe ISD elementary and intermediate campuses. And we also supplemented our junior high campuses. That was a big deal. So. You'll start hearing probably a little bit more. And it's boys and girls getting out there playing. So the equipment's been modified for, for smaller hands and things like this. Uh, pickleball, y'all probably heard about pickleball. This is really blowing up right now. So we have a development program coming into the district. And this summer, we're gonna be spending some time with our coaches and through in K through 12, we'll be uh, de have a development program for pickleball. And a lot of campuses do have equipment on, on hand. It's just, how do we use it? You know, how do you teach younger generations this, this game? So it's gotten real popular. The marathon development programs have spread. Lacrosse is getting real big in our district uh, as well. Uh, we sent 19 uh, teachers to our taper convention. And then the catch coordination kits for K through eight are in place on every campus. And so you may start hearing your kids, you haven't already hear about like go slow, low foods, those kind of things. This all comes from catch and it's that health program that we developed from kindergarten all the way to the eighth grade. But then we were talking about some items and things we'd like to try to uh, improve upon or add. Uh, one of them was the increased, increased focus on nutrition within all PE and health programs, um, and that's K through 12, you know, because uh, it, nutrition is something that's very, very important. You know, the kids eating properly, and that kind of goes to the next uh, the tag there, emphasize proper nutrition and athletics programs, you know, because, you know, our kids are on uh, these great weight training programs and strength and conditioning <laughs> programs, but are we talking about nutrition? And that's something that we could probably do a better job and coordinate with athletics, talk about how we can incorporate that into those athletic training programs so those kids are hearing these lessons as well. Now, not just working out, getting bigger, faster, stronger, but they're fueling their bodies properly to maintain. Maybe for me and a lot of other people, is just injury prevention. How can you train to prevent injury? And the last thing, opportunities for community partner engagement and presentations with our staff. You know, get out, get our message out, and have them come speak to us about some of their programs as well. Uh, we'll meet again, and we'll kind of do a review of the year. And at the, at the review, uh, we'll talk about recess minutes, how much time is being spent on campus, minutes, things like that, we'll review that for all the campuses. That's it. Excellent. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Um, we are wrapping up for the meeting. Do you have, does anybody have any other concerns that they want to bring forward or um, put on for the next agenda or things that you want you know, to talk about? I never want anybody to not have an opportunity. Okay. I have one comment. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sure a lot of you all watched the board meeting last week. Um, and so I do just want to make my own personal comment. Um, there was a lot of discussion on library book content. And so while we have not necessarily discussed that as a shack, I don't want the silence to be misconstrued for all of us saying that everything's great there. Um, I do think there's still some work that can be done in terms of library book content. So, but I think in terms of the topics we talked today, um, that was probably a better interest of our time spent today in this meeting. But I just want to be clear from my perspective, um, I, I think there's still work to be done on that topic. So I don't want the silence to be misconstrued, like I said, for um, thinking everything's all well and good there. Okay. I'd like to just add a little to what April said. I don't think it would be that big a deal if you have the entire library at every high school in CISD online, as in these books are in our library that anybody can go online and go, these are the books that are in our library, and they can look at them, either get them themselves, look them up, however they want to do it, 
see what we have. And if there's any uh, ruffled feathers over it, they can come through the process to the shaft or whatever, however they want to do that. Mm -hmm. But they know what's in the library. And so I'm sure it's on a computer somewhere of what's in the library because they check books out and put books back. They do all that. I don't think it would be a big step to go from where it is to on the CISD web site. Are you saying something similar to um, the public library system? Yes. Dr. Upshaw, I mean, well, I'm, I'm aware of something it's called, is it Follett? Would you like to share more about that? So parents are able to log in to see what's available as far as titles in the library. Yeah, I use it, I've never logged in. Okay. You're able to, you are able to, to see how to access, so what we have in our library. The challenge is finding check on that and I know which books are available at, in each school I check on that you can do it okay. yeah. you have to I use the the code of my son you have to you, you need a code to enter right I just use like all of, like to, whatever. is there a way to do it through SSO as well we can and if there's something that individual we can help you Figure out, figure that out. If if you if we yeah. if we don't yes, know how I, we can. I enter with yes. the code mm -hmm. of my son, my son's code. Oh, okay. To the SSO. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I was wanting, to, so it's pretty much there. So I was wanting so that any CISD taxpayer could pop in there, and you know if they had the time to do that, and just put more <laughs> eyes on. It. I don't think anybody disagrees with the transparency that the community members want on the content that our students are being exposed to. Um, I think it's a really big topic um, that needs time devoted to it with prepared discussion. And I think that's probably outside the purview of the closing time that we have right now. But um, but I, I do think, I do hear you and I do think that that's you know, something that is of concern. All right. Um, Oh, uh, so sorry. Going yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, stay tuned. Watch your email. You'll be getting emails about um, the mental health subcommittee. Please join um, the curriculum review uh, subcommittee and then a special meeting with the bylaws um, will be coming out. So stay tuned. And thank you guys for your time tonight. I know that it's precious and we really, really appreciate um, you being here. So on that, meeting, uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Second, <laughs> and all in favor. Awesome. Thanks, guys.